the first of two scheduled presidential debates between former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden took place Thursday night. There were some very serious topics covered. He will drive us into World War III, and we're closer to World War III than anybody can imagine. We are very, very close to World War III. You want a World War III, let him follow and win and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. Just do what you want. There's a thing called Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all and required response. The idea, the idea, I can't think of a single major leader in the world who wouldn't trade places with the job I've done and what they've done. There was also a rather frightening and revealing look at the president in a state not usually seen behind the curtain of the presidential press corps. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie. That he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never. But I have, you know, how many? How, I've right? seen you swing. I know you swing. Okay, let's let's, let's not, not act like children. Around. President Trump, we're going to turn. Around. Let's not act like children. Some of the headlines in the aftermath, New York Times, Biden struggles in debate alarm Democrats. Washington Post, Democrats panic over Biden, doubting his future. For more on that, we go to Philadelphia to speak with Professor Tony Montero of the Saturday Free School there. Tony, what did you see last night? Well, you know, I agree with the general impression of the mainstream media, uh, which is saying that Biden failed uh, in this audition of whether or not he should be the candidate of the Democratic Party in 2024. But he failed miserably. He showed himself uh, really to be in uh, rapid cognitive decline, uh, so much so that he was mixing up uh, uh, ideas, for instance, immigration, and abortion. He's asked about abortion, and he talks about immigration uh, and uh, uh, so on. He is feeble and unaware of what he's doing. And Which that was on real display. Question. Yeah, that raises, that, here's the question. This is the guy who's the commander in chief who's decided that we should be at war with Russia. Well, this is the guy who supposedly is the commander in chief. The right. question that who was is. raised most significantly is who is running the government? Because it's obvious this guy is incapable of running the government, of making decisions. He is, I mean, he's just completely out of it. And that's what this debate showed. But the debate took place upon a foundation of social and political rebellion of the people. How do we know there's a social political rebellion of the people? Well, in one sense, let us look at the most recent New York Times Siena poll, which, and I'm not uh, talking about what the poll said about who supports Biden, who supports uh, Trump. But that part of the poll, where 70% of the people polled said that the political and economic system had to either be, and they used the word political and economic systems, had to either be significantly changed or totally torn down. That is what, in political science terms, we call a crisis of legitimacy. In Gramscian terms, Antonio Gramsci terms, it is an uh, interregnum where the ruling elite cannot rule in the old way, and hence the old is dying and the new has not yet been born. This is what we're looking at. It is upon this foundation 
that the ruling class put Biden forward as their best representative to beat Trump, but more than to beat Trump, to quell the rebellion of the people, to rebuild what they call the center from which they govern and rule or have governed and rule. The fact of the matter is we are either in a pre-Civil War or a pre-revolutionary situation. Whether either of these will be crystallized into revolution or civil war or both is a matter that we cannot decide at this point. But we do know from every poll being taken, the dissatisfaction of the people, the anger of the people, the people turning on the representatives of every major institution, including the universities, including the political uh, leadership, including the corporate leadership, across the board. This is an unprecedented moment in American history. I think Gramsci had it right. An interregnum, a moment between two epochs or two eras in American history. The debate and Biden's performance is representative of the fra fragility of the ruling class itself, which I don't think can rule. I don't think they can govern. And it was on full display. That's what that debate said to me. Trump performed pretty well, but Biden was a complete disaster. He was out of it. He didn't know where he was or what he was talking about at times, but he is a representative of a class that is in an existential crisis. I'm looking at the transcript um, because some of the, there was so much to take in watching this that um, I was afraid, like, I, and I'm, I'm sure that I did miss things. But there's, there's this one part, for example, that I caught uh, and I was just reminded of looking at it where Biden was calling Trump a whiner and said the last time you lo lost, you kept appealing in courts, not one court, blah, blah, blah. And he was started rambling and Bash just interrupted him and said, we'll be right back with more from the CNN presidential debate live from Georgia and went to commercial, like rescued him. Uh, yeah, kind of. But. He couldn't be rescued, frankly. You know, television is a visual media. It's more about what you say and how you appear than it is about what you say. And his appearance, uh, I mean, you know, he was standing there when he wasn't speaking with his mouth partially open and his eyes focused on something that was far away. It was like he was, I don't know how to describe it, but the visuals, I mean, you know, we think about the 1960 Kennedy uh, Nixon debate, and it was the visuals, not the substance, that gave the debate to Kennedy. At least that's what most pundits said at that time. The visuals were terrible. They cannot reverse it. They cannot, the mainstream media can't spin this. People saw what they saw, but they saw what they've been seeing, but they saw it for a complete hour and a half. And they have to pull him. Uh, they're going to do it ceremoniously, I, I, they hope, uh, but sooner rather than later, probably after the July 4th holiday, they will have to pull him. Right. And in pulling him, they admit defeat. They will not win in November. They're also admitting that they've allowed this guy who can't carry on a conversation for an hour to take mm -hmm. us to war with Russia. That's right. Absolutely. Which is even more reckless on their part. That's right. All right thank you, Tony. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Don. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.